Hi friends, Tammy Hooper here. So today my video is all about how to check the water pressure in your home. You want to make sure you do this a couple of times a year because if you don't, you could potentially run into some issues with leaks that maybe you could have prevented if you were keeping an eye on your water pressure. So here's um, kind of what happens with your water pressure. So if you are connected to county or city water, then um, the city's water pressure is really high. It's higher than what it needs to be inside your home. And that's because they have much bigger pipes that they're forcing that water through and they need a lot more pressure to get that water to you because it's traveling over a much larger distance um, to different homes. So the water pressure is much higher. Once it reaches your home, obviously the pipes inside your home are a lot smaller, so that's gonna reduce the water pressure. You also have, um, in some cases, you have a, um, a valve inside your home that helps reduce the water pressure. Um, in some cases, not everyone has them, or if you do have one, it may not be working properly. So this is why it's important that you check the water pressure in your home a couple of times a year, and it's real easy to do. I'm gonna show you, I've got this little handy tool here that you can purchase at the hardware store. This one was only $10, um, and I'll show you how it works but it's definitely worth the $10 investment to make sure that you are checking your water pressure pretty regularly. So um, here's what can happen if your water pressure gets above normal. Um, so inside your home, you've got this water pressure, you've got your pipes, and the pipes inside your home can only sustain so much water pressure um, when you're using your water before they may start to loosen from the pressure or um, they may break from the pressure. In most cases, what you will see is they'll just come loose. Or you will see a water faucet or a shower head that will start to drip. If you have PVC pipe or um, um, any kind of like some of the newer piping that's like a plastic material, those tend to be able to withstand a lot more water pressure um, a higher water pressure than um, some of the piping that may have been used in an older home or in the past. Um, so you may not see pipes start to come apart if your water pressure gets to, let's just say, 110, 120. Um, you still could see that, um, but more likely you're going to see faucets start to leak. You may see some piping underneath your sink that may start to leak. Um, and you just want to avoid that because what can happen is when you have a small leak, let's just say you're in a bathroom upstairs and you and there's a sink and you have a sink there that you're using regularly but you're not looking under the sink on a regular basis. Um, because this bathroom is upstairs, if you get a leak under that sink, that water has to go somewhere. Um, so maybe, you know, you've got a hole that comes up through the floor or from the wall where... Um, the sink where all the water piping is connected, well that water is probably gonna run down into that hole or it's gonna run along that pipe into the hole in the wall um, and the water's gonna go, it's gonna go somewhere. You're gonna find it somewhere else in your home. So you may be standing down in your kitchen which may be below that bathroom one day and you may feel a drip on your head. You look up and you've got a spot, might not be very big on your ceiling. So good news is if it's just a small drip and it's not a major, major leak, then you can handle it. You don't have a whole lot of repair, but you may have to repaint your ceiling. That's not an easy task. That can be costly depending on how big your ceiling is. If your living room and your kitchen are connected and now you've got to paint the whole thing. Um, so one tiny little drip can turn into a big problem. Um, if that drip gets bigger and you end up with a pipe that's spewing water, then that can become an even bigger problem because now you might have a cabinet that you have to replace in the bathroom. You may have some flooring, some baseboards, who knows? It can turn into a big problem. So just preventing water leaks is um, a really good thing to do in your home to avoid bigger messes later. Um, so when the water pressure inside your home gets too high, then it puts too much pressure on your pipes. And because the faucets um, in your home and the shower heads and think the fixtures in your home are not designed for high pressure, 
those usually are the first to go when you've got a water pressure problem inside your home and now you've got to replace those. Well, those things can be pretty expensive too if you've got to replace the whole thing. Or what if you don't know how to do that and you've got to have a plumber come over and take care of it for you? Well, I just had a client recently who had to have just one handle on their bathtub replaced because there was water leaking out of the handle and that was a $300 repair. So this is a $10 water pressure meter. Check your water pressure regularly. Doesn't mean you won't ever get leaks, but it will help you prevent leaks. Now, if you're noticing that you got one leak and then two weeks later you got another leak and then a couple of days later you've got another leak, then you may very well have a problem with water pressure. Um, you may have a problem with your pressure relief valve. If you have one, it may need to be replaced. Those typically do need to re be replaced every, according to plumbers that I've spoken to, every three to six years. Um, your water pressure relief valve will need to be replaced if you have one in your home. So it's just very important to check your, your valve. So I'm going to show you how to do it. So I bought this... Um, this tester from a local hardware store, so you can find them. I'm going to show you the packaging that it came in. So here's the packaging that it came in. So it's called a water pressure test gauge. It was $9.99. They have some that are a little more expensive, but for my purposes, I didn't really need anything more expensive. When you look at the gauge, it has a nozzle here that you connect to your outside water faucet um, and then it's got um, some dials here where you're going to be able to read what your water pressure is. So let me tell you how you're going to do this. So you're going to make sure that there's no water running inside your home. So the dishwasher's not running, you didn't just flush a toilet and now the toilet's filling up or there's no laundry and the washing machine going, no one's taking a shower, just no water being used. You don't Turn your water off, leave your water on in your home, but you just don't want there to be any water being used because that can change your water pressure reading. So what you wanna do is when you know there's no water being used in your home, you go outside and you find your outside faucet that is closest to where your city or county water is feeding into your home. Some homes have a water faucet on the front of their home and then one, uh, one on the back or on the sides. You may have one a little closer to the road than the other, but your water is more than likely coming from the road. So whichever one is closest to the road, but you'll know kind of where your, um, your wa what direction your water is coming from or even where your um, sewer access pipe is. That'll kind of give you an idea. Um, where your water meter is will kind of give you an idea. So. Um, take it outside to the faucet that is closest to that area. Remove any hoses or anything that you have connected to that faucet. You, you can connect this to the end of a hose, but you don't want to do that, a garden hose. So unscrew your garden hose, remove that if you've got one connected, and you're going to screw this directly into your water faucet. So you will just connect it like you normally would to the water faucet. Okay, and this turns so you don't have to worry about rotating this. You'll keep this facing you. Once you've got it tightened, then you just turn the faucet on and turn it all the way as far as it will go. Um, there shouldn't be any water shooting out of this if you've got this on there correctly. If there's water shooting out of it, then turn the water off and readjust it so that it's on there correctly and you've got a good seal. Once you've turned the water all the way on, then this dial is going to move. Both hands are going to move. The black hand will move and the red hand will move, okay? You're looking at the black hand. It can be confusing because this package that this comes in, it does not tell you which hand gives you the pressure reading. On this particular model, and this is a Watts model, it's the black hand that you're looking for. So this measures water pressure all the way up to 200 and this measures it in PSI. So you want to make sure, and it has a little PSI down here on the bottom. So you want to make sure whatever um, reader you're getting, it does read in PSI. And you want to make sure that it stays 90 and below. 
So if your water pressure is less than 60, it's probably too low. If it's more than 90, then you're creeping up on too high. If it's 100, 110, 120, you're pretty high. You, by 120, you've probably already experienced a couple of leaks or you're about to get one from a faucet or something. So um, if it gets above 90, then you probably want to call a plumber and have a plumber come and check your pressure relief valve or if you don't have one install one for you or figure out you know what is the problem um, but this is just a way just to make sure that your pressure is not too high now if you want to check it a second time while it's still connected what this red handle is for is say we got a reading of 70 I can move the red on the 70 and just leave it there turn the water off and then now I know where my last reading was. It's at 70. I don't have to remember that because I'm not standing outside with a pencil and a piece of paper, you know, trying to, you know, write all of this down. I've got it on 70, so I know where it was the last time I tested it. Turn the water back on, and then your black handle is going to move up, and you want to see if you get another 70. Really, the only reason why you're doing it twice is you're just double-checking to make sure the tool is working properly and that you do get a similar reading. Um, so that's what the red handle is for, is just so you can mark where your last reading was. Um, so pretty easy, right? Easy uh, process to check your water pressure. Well worth it to save yourself some unnecessary leaks um, in your home. And I hope you guys find that useful. Thanks so much. Hope you have a great day.